Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the ulnar variants. It is going to be a very short video. We are going to talk about the positive and the negative ulnar variants. We'll see some of the features and we'll finish off with the topic. So starting with ulnar variants, basically what happens over here in simple terms is the position of your ulna shifts in comparison to your radius. Okay. So if we take our bones, this is the scaphoid side. So I'll keep my radius over here and the ulna over here. Okay, so now what happens is in ulnar variance, if ulna is too high up in comparison to this line of the non styloidal part, right? This is the styloid part of the radius. If you take the line at the non styloidal part, normally it will be at the same level, okay? But if it's too high, this is called as the positive ulnar variance, or if it's too low, it is called as the negative ulnar variance. Normal one is when it is in the same line or it can be slightly lower. A positive or a negative of around 2 millimeters is acceptable. But more than that, where the ulna, is go ulna goes too low or too high up, it is called as the positive and the negative ulnar variance. So now that you know the basic concept, let's go into a little bit more depth. So what happens over here in positive ulnar variance is, there can be not always impingement of your TFCC, right? The TFCC structure we discussed about in the last video. It is between your ulna and the radius and the carpal bones, right? Over here in this region. So this structure TFCC can get impinged between your ulna and your triquetrum. Ulna and triquetrum bone over here, it can get impinged. Now, what is seen is when there is positive ulnar variance, that is, okay, I'll take this and this is your radius and ulna right when there is positive ulnar variance what will happen is the space over here will be less so tfcc will be comparatively thinner compare this to negative ulnar variance where the ulna is down the tfcc will be comparatively thicker okay that's simple logic right more space so the tfcc will be thicker so what happens in your positive ulnar variance is there is a long ulna which can be a cause of a distal fracture of the radius. So over here, if radius fractures, the height of the radius might reduce and the ulna might look slightly higher. So that can be one of the reasons that is the cause of your positive ulnar variance. And what this does is there will be pain that might be present on your pronation and ulnar deviation. So this is my hand pronation. Okay. And ulnar deviation because the ulna is higher up the structures might get compressed in that region and that can cause the pain in that region. And what will be the treatment for this? Treatment would be joint leveling. You level the joints back again through surgery by shortening your ulna, right? Ulna is gone higher up, you shorten it. Compare that to your negative ulna variance. It is relatively short ulna and abnormal force distribution occurs because of this short ulna what will happen there will be too much force in the radial region correct because the ulna is not bearing any weight and tfcc will be much more thicker so what can happen because of the too much forces acting on the radial region there can be degeneration of the radiocarpal joint and also avascular necrosis can occur at the lunate okay radial region so lunate will be involved and this avascular necrosis is also associated with the disease that is the keen blocks disease okay so that is something which is commonly associated with your negative ulnar variance and treatment for this would be because your ulna is shorter you can either lengthen the ulna or you can shorten the radius to correct this uh, imbalance or there is another method of fusing the carpals i don't know much about the surgical part of it so i will keep that to the specialist but this is what the whole concept is about of ulnar positive and negative variants right so with that we finish up this topic in the next video we will go on to the movements and biomechanics of your wrist joint so stay tuned for that thanks for watching
If you like my content, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. It will really help me out. And thank you for watching.